I'm excited to be here. We have Kirsten um, joining us today from Florida, which is going to be exciting. But I think we're going to kick off today by uh, letting Justin kind of kick us off. Yeah, um, I'm just going to go with a little brief announcement and introduction because I want to make sure we have enough time for the presentations that you yeah. and Kirsten have put together. But um, I wanted to make two really quick announcements um, that are relevant to this month only. So I want this is the since this is the monthly call. One is we are uh, really getting really close to launching a new class, a new course, something that we've been working on. I don't know how long, probably since the middle of the summer, or maybe even in, since May. I think. Yeah. Um, and this is something that Sarah and I and other members of our team, but Sarah's been putting in most of the work. Um, it's a new course. It's basically a, a um, introduction course to digital and content marketing. Um, it would be a, it's a precursor to our, our full program. Um, it's, it's also designed to help students walk through how, uh, how to build an online marketing plan. Uh, in lieu of or before taking our larger program. So it's built on the back of around 20 different digital download documents we've created, which are also available for free, um, which we'll be rolling those out soon as well. But this course is going to eventually be $299, but anyone who registers uh, this month will get 50% off. So uh, we'll have it actually going live next week, but people can pre-register uh, before then and actually next week people can start paying and start taking the class you know you're working with uh, our team right now to get it all uploaded and um, you talk a little bit just really briefly about the curriculum that's included yeah absolutely so I'm really excited about this class and also I want to clarify since I know we have some current students on the line so for those of you that are currently subscribed to the program you will be getting access to this additional curriculum content um, basically as part of your subscription so, that's right yeah so if you're already a member of the institute then you'll get access to all this information just as part of your subscription if you're not already a member then you'll be able to join and take our intro class um, instead of like Justin said starting with our longer program um, but essentially what we do is we've got some great materials that are a mixture of ebooks, guides, and worksheets, and those are all paired together with different classes that are directly related to content marketing. So there's essentially kind of four you know pieces to this: uh, content branding, content development and optimization, um, content research and strategy, and content distribution and promotion. So it kind of moves you all of the guides and ebooks and tools and templates and worksheets that we give you move you through the classes and really help you put together I think what is a really strong content marketing strategy and also it helps you really gain an understanding of the way that content marketing you know you have to take a holistic view of it for it to be really effective so um, I think it's going to be pretty unique. I'm excited to roll it out to our current students. And again, for those of you um, who might find this interesting, we'll be sharing some more information down the road. And again, it'll be online next week. So. Yeah. So would you mind sharing the link in, in the chat? Yeah, sure. um, and so the other thing real quickly I wanted to mention is that that this, that this month only, or this month currently, we have a $300 off offer for December for... Um, all of our bigger programs, uh, the Institute in January online, Institute in February online, and the in-person in Asheville in, in January. So if you want to go learn more about those, search JB Media Institute or go to our website and click on Institute or Education and submit the form and we'll get you in, in um, onboarded uh, and that discount code. Awesome, yeah, so if you wanna kick off 2018 with a lot of good education, really take your digital marketing and your content marketing up a notch, we've got a lot of different offerings. But again, I'm gonna go ahead and pass this presenter role over to Kirsten today, and she's gonna kick us off by talking about email marketing. And again, this is the first time we've had Kirsten um, on the call with us, so I'm really excited to have her here today. And Kirsten, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Awesome. And can everyone hear Kirsten all right? Kirsten, if you could just introduce yourself a little bit, and if you're having any issues, please feel free to chat in. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Um, as Sarah mentioned, I'm Kirsten Campbell. Uh, I'm with Virginia Media Group at the ACC Center. Um, I'm the Content Creation and Email Specialist, which essentially means 
I work on a variety of content types, but my specialty area for the agency is email marketing. So I'm really excited to be here today and talk to you guys a little bit about something I love doing. Um, I get very excited about talking about email um, and I could talk for hours. So it was really hard for me to boil this down to about 15 minutes, but um, I uh, hope you guys learned something new and um, you know, take some strategies home with you today. Um, the goal here that I'm, you know, I really want to focus on email as a tool to build and maintain relationships with your audience, your customer base, um, whether it's a product, a service area, um, email marketing is an extremely powerful tool. Um, and this is a quote here by a pretty famous marketer, David Newman. He says, email has an ability many channels don't, creating valuable personal touches at scale. And for someone who works in email every day, I completely agree with this thought process. Um, I see it as an extremely powerful thing because you have a direct line to your interested consumers or past customers. Um, I'm kind of biased, but in my opinion, it's probably the most cost effective and productive marketing channel that we have access to. Um, and in my opinion, truly at its core, email is really about building and maintaining relationships with your audience. Um, and because of that, today I really want to talk about how you can approach email in that way and handle it as responsibly and as holistically as possible. Um, because, you know, the downside to bad email practices is spam complaints, unsubscribes, or, you know, at worst, a loss of your customer loyalty. And then, of course, on the other side of that, utilizing best practices um, can often lead to high engagement rates, more conversions, and of course, at best, customer retention. Um, in, my, in a past JV Media webinar, Jenna, uh, who also works with the Institute, kind of dove into some you know, email marketing 101 strategies. So today, I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper, dig a little bit deeper into some more strategic things that you can do to optimize your campaign performance. Um, and maintain those relationships as best as possible. So, the first step of all of this is building relationships. Um, to do that, obviously, you have to attract a customer, um, gaining their trust or interest in some way, and then, of course, hopefully have them subscribe to your list. Um, and building relationships happens in a variety of ways uh, through a lot of marketing strategies and channels. Uh, including SEO, digital advertising, social media, PR, and then of course your face-to-face -face networking and your local relationships. Um, you know, these marketing techniques will hopefully result in a visit or some sort of engagement with a potential customer, and that could be, you know, them coming into your office or storefront, coming into your website and reading your content, following you on social media, or at best, someone who comes in and, and buys your product or engages with your service. Um, and you know, now that you have their attention and you get them as a subscriber, the, the, the main next step is how do you keep that attention? How do you maximize that relationship? Um, the, the best way to do that is to have a clear, accessible, and easy to use email opt-in area on your website, um, especially on your most popular pages. Sometimes with clients, I see, you know, they have something in the footer of their site only or in a very hard to reach place. Um, so oftentimes I recommend having a very clear call to action on your homepage. Um, a supplementary option being having that call to action on your blog or page sidebar. Uh, here are a couple examples you can see. Um, this is from one of our clients site homepages. It's pretty closely above the fold and calling people to action to sign up to their newsletter. Um, this image here is from JB Media's blog. So as people are reading the content, seeing things that they like, seeing things that interest them, they have a very easy and accessible way to sign up for the newsletter. This slide here shows you a couple of other options. Um, obviously, a pretty popular uh, option is a pop-up. We see these on home pages. We see these on blog pages. Um, and while there is some controversy surrounding pop-ups, some people find them, you know, intrusive or um, consider them an annoyance. Uh, 
they can work and they are very effective, especially when you have a landing page with a very clear call to action or a very clear incentive. Um, and then of course, last but not least, um, including a uh, sign up area in your site footer. Now the footer doesn't necessarily get the most traffic. However, you know, based on past client relationships, I've, I've used heat maps to kind of see where people are going on the site to subscribe. And the footer does get some traffic. It's a place that people use as a resource for extra information, whether it's contact information, or as you can see in this example, um, helpful links or warranty information. So including these calls to action is really important to building your list and forming these relationships with your customers. Um, obviously, an exception to these are when you acquire emails at events or at point of sale. Um, and the best way to manage that is just to really keep um, close tabs on your data. So if you have a clipboard out, if you're using an iPad, to make sure that you're tracking those, those people coming to you and writing down their email or giving you their email address um, and uploading it to your email platform in such a way that it's, it's trackable and it's accurate. So getting new subscribers is extremely exciting, um, but don't hit the send button yet. Um, the, you know, building this relationship again is step one, but maintaining it and, and kind of massaging the relationship is, is really important. So um, we're gonna talk about that now. Uh, the first step in kind of creating this is, is putting together branded, organized email templates. I know it sounds really simple, but it's a really important part of the puzzle. Um, another strategy is using list organization and segmentation, um, subject line testing, and then of course the last piece of the puzzle is reporting and monitoring. So when you're gonna create your email templates, there's a lot of important considerations. Um, but first and foremost, these should be a reminder of your brand. These should translate over to your email recipient and feel familiar. It should feel comfortable. They don't want to feel like they don't know who you are or where this marketing is coming from. Um, so I always, I always suggest that you know you include your logo or imagery that's reminiscent of your brand, whether it's small, large, doesn't have to be intrusive. Um, but I like to include a logo for my clients um, on a regular basis. In addition to that, I always recommend using brand colors and design elements. Um, you know, if your email looks similar to your website and looks familiar, um, you know, your, your relationship and all of that has already been developed, then people are going to be more inclined to open to read and stay on your list. Um, customize. Limit use of downloadable or provided templates and stock photography. Um, Essentially, if you use a free template or a template you can download, there's a pretty high chance that your emails could look exactly like somebody else's. And the same rule of thumb goes for stock photography. Um, the more authentic your content is, the more you know of a relationship will develop between you and your audience and the more relevant it will feel. And then lastly, when building a template, um, I like to include footer links to your website and social media channels. This way, subscribers can easily follow you on social if they're not already. They can have quick access to your social content. And then, of course, they can get to your website. So if they read something they like in the email or if they want to learn more um, about something, you know, whether it's related to the email or not, they can easily click and get to your website pretty quickly. So the next step to that is creating a template that's best optimized for conversion. Um, and in this case, you know, readability and clarity is critical. Um, the content should be easy to follow and any calls to action like shop now, register now, read more, etc., should be super clear and easy to click. Um, oftentimes you'll see emails where there's kind of running text and a lot of hyperlinks. Um, those emails, you know, obviously will get clicks, but they, they can be confusing, hard to read. It's hard to notice what the call to action really is. Um, and because of that, I'd like to use buttons whenever possible. Um, in my experience, they have a much higher click rate across the board. Um, really with every email campaign I sent, 
uh, I send, I look at the click map following and the buttons are always getting the highest amount of clicks, the most attention. And it's because they're there, they're obvious. It's clear, it's simple, it's one button, it stands out. Um, so I recommend having those just to optimize your conversion rate and your click rate. Lastly, linking directly to your call to action and making that call to action pretty simple um, and singularly focused is in my opinion very important. Um, emails that have four or five different goals or multiple calls to action um, can limit the amount of action taken. Um, so I recommend you know, taking your person, your, your subscriber from your call to action directly to the area where they can act. Um, oftentimes you'll see a register now if that goes to a home page or a more descriptive page, um, it can kind of cut into your conversion possibility. So having those buttons, having them clear and obvious, and having them take the subscriber directly where they need to go to convert is an ideal scenario. So in addition to organizing your emails um, for optimization, um, I think it's really important to organize and segment your lists um, for two reasons. One, um, organization and segmentation reduces unsubscribes and it also optimizes engagement. So from an organization standpoint, there are a few best practices. And again, there will be some outliers and some ex exceptions to these rules, but for the most part, these are things that I've seen work for a majority of my clients. Um, so if possible, I recommend having one master marketing list that contains all of your subscribers. And the reason I recommend one list is because with most email platforms, you have to pay for each subscriber you have. And if that subscriber is on marketing list A, B, C, D, E, F, G, et cetera, you're gonna pay for that person multiple times. Um, in addition, you can use that master marketing list and organize it into groups and segments. Um, now groups and segments can be a little bit different depending on your email platform. Um, for example, in MailChimp, um, only segments can be used to exclude subscribers from a campaign, whereas groups can be used to include subscribers. So if you will only want to send to five subgroups of your list, you can do that. However, if you want to exclude anybody or include a certain group, um, you might need to use a segment. Um, and it's important to incorporate this into your overall email strategy because some campaigns are not applicable to everyone on your list, um, especially for example, this thing that we're doing today. Um, if we were to send promotional emails to people who are already registered to attend a webinar, um, they might become frustrated, they might become irritated. So we use segmentation to ensure that those who are already engaging with our service are not getting inundated with con continuous promotional emails. Um, so, you know, I'm sure you've seen this meme before. It's quite popular. Um, and there's the reason it's out there is because marketers do this. They, they send an email to everyone on their list. They multiply emails. Um, there's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of duplicates. Um, and I don't really feel like this is an ideal strategy for maintaining relationships. Um, practices like this, you know, sending emails, um, you know, on a whim or just doing it without strategy will result in a higher rate of unsubscribes and, of course, spam complaints, which is probably the worst thing that can happen to your list. Um, and so, you know, rather than doing that, you can, you can segment your list and, again, reduce those unsubscribes, optimize your engagement, and, you know, there are multiple segmentation options you can use and try and test, depending on your needs and, of course, the capabilities of your email platform. Um, in my opinion, and what I've used in the past, is segments are great for targeting interest groups, event attendees, product purchasers, um, specific locations, highly engaged or, on the other end, inactive subscribers. Um, you know, if you have an event that you run every year and you only want to send emails to those who have attended in the past, or if you want to exclude people who have already attended, um, segmentation is a really, really helpful tool. In addition um, to segmentation, I also like to deploy subject line A-B testing. Now this is called multiple things in the industry. It might be called variable testing, um, but 
essentially what it allows you to do is set up a campaign and test a bunch of variables. Um, in this case, I'm talking about subject line testing because I really feel like it helps take the guesswork out of writing subject lines um, and kind of makes that process a lot easier, a lot more streamlined, and a lot more effective. Um, there, you know, overall, it's A-B testing is offered by most platforms. Um, it doesn't usually incur extra costs. Again, there are some outliers, um, but it's really easy to set up. And essentially what you do is you can write two, three, however many subject lines you'd like. And when you set up your campaign, you plug both of them in or multiples in. And when the campaign is sent, you will, you will select a um, test time frame and a test ratio. Um, I recommend allowing at least three to four hours for your test time frame. That is recommended by most uh, email platforms out there and testing your subject lines on, you know, no less than 25% of your list. Um, this way you're getting a more accurate um, depiction of, of, you know, the activity and what's happening. Um, so overall, A-B testing is going to help you determine which subject, subject lines resonate most with your list and then automatically deliver the most popular one to the majority of that list. So if you're testing on 25%, you know, the most popular will get delivered to 75% of your list. And of course, in doing so, ensure that you're getting the optimal open rate you can possibly get with that email. This is a pretty hot topic, you know, how to write subject lines, you know, what's the secret sauce. Um, and I've taken multiple webinars myself on subject line creation and, you know, best practices for doing so. And overall, I've, I've found just in my own research and my clients that there really is not a secret sauce. Um, there are no tips or tricks that you can really use to guarantee higher open rates. Um, in general, you know, relevancy, relevancy to the content inside your email is the most important thing. Um, you know, it is your audience's first impression. It's the thing they're going to see. It's the thing that's going to capture their attention and get them to open that email. Um, and, you know, that's why I love A-B testing because, you know, I can come up with a few ideas for subject lines, some that I think are great. Um, and my email platform is going to kind of do the hard work for me um, and allow me to get creative um, and make sure that the most popular for my audience is what they're going to see for the most part. Um, apart from open rate, I did want to touch on, you know, the biggest concern with email subject lines is getting flagged as um, I see this a lot. Um, really big brands do this a lot. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they have some room to give. Um, but avoid using spam triggering words and characters like percent off, sale, using dollar signs. In some cases, using all caps can be a red flag. Um, and lately, I've seen emojis and symbols coming uh, into subject line creation. And while they're fun and creative, uh, they can have an impact on deliverability and can also lead to you getting put into a spam folder. So, hey, Kirsten, I know you've got um, like one more, two more slides. I've got a couple of questions, and because we're running low on time, I'd like to jump into those and answer them real quick um, since I need to move on to the second half of the presentation around quarter of. Um, the two questions that have come through so far are from the first one from Allison, which is, are there ways to automate any of the segmentation or is it all manual? There are. Um, so again, depending on your email platform, and I'm happy to uh, answer some more detailed questions with you um, later on, but depending on your email platform, there will be options for that segmentation that will automatically update and your platform will do the investigative work for you. So for example, um, if it's people who have engaged with your last five campaigns, people who have not opened your last 10 campaigns, um, there's a variety of options. But again, it depends on the platform you're using um, and you know exactly what you're, you're trying to achieve. Awesome, and then the second question comes from Becky, which was just simply, do you recommend MailChimp? <laughs> Um, well, I get this question sometimes, and the answer is it really depends on where you're at with your marketing, your list size, your, your budget. 
Um, I will say that MailChimp is the most user-friendly and intuitive. So if you're new at email marketing, um, if you really want something that's drag and drop, effective, efficient, I do recommend MailChimp for people who are, are new to email marketing or really don't have you know, a developer on staff to help them with some more high-level stuff. Um, so yes, I do, but again, it depends on um, where you're at, what your technical needs are, um, and how much time and money you can uh, invest in your email marketing strategy. Awesome. And if you want to go ahead and, and wrap up, Kirsten, um, sure. with the last couple slides, maybe you could stay on the chat for the rest of the call. And if people have additional email marketing questions, they could chat them into you. Um, but why don't you go ahead and I'm going to prep up to take over in just a moment. Yeah, absolutely. I was actually getting to my last slide, which is, you know, utilizing these tools like A-B testing, like segmentation is really important, but the, the best way to maximize their impact is to keep an eye on what's happening. Um, you know, to, to monitor reports in your email platform, to, to keep a watchful eye on open rate, click rate, unsubscribe rate, any referral traffic and conversion that you can get in analytics. Um, I do have a note here that um, with email marketing, it's really great to have your website set up to track email traffic in Google Analytics, if possible, if you have that option. Um, that way you can see website referral traffic and conversions. And then, of course, revenue, if that's applicable to what you do. Um, and if the changes are positive, good. Keep up the good work. Keep experimenting. But if you see any negative changes where there's more unsubscribes, lower open rate, um, refine your approach, you know, keep trying new things. Um, and again, you know, you can try all these ideas and use all these tools, but um, monitoring them and keeping a watchful eye is a really critical last step to make sure that your audience is actually um, responding well to, to new strategies. Thank you all so much for joining us. As usual, we really love having everyone um, participate in our digital drop-ins. Please feel free to share information about our monthly free webinars with your friends, your colleagues. And for those of you who are students of the Institute, I look forward to seeing you in the online classroom. Have a great day.